Don't waste this crisis. A young Christian might take great comfort in the Psalm 23, which we all love, where it says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. That is right, that is good, that is an awesome promise. But if that's as far or as deep as it goes, you might get to the other side of the crisis or the, the shadow, the valley of the shadow of death, and you might look back on your time there and say, all I did was brace for impact and put my head in the sand and waited for it to be over, and then uh, once it was over, I uh, relaxed and got back to my life as it was. Nothing ever changed, though. I didn't grow, and was God glorified through that? I'm not sure. See, a better way to approach challenges and trials is is to, well, first ask how God's going to grow me or challenge me or change me or shape me into his image. Uh, but even better than that would be to say, how's God going to glorify himself? Because God promises that that the line that Joseph has at the end of the story uh, to his brothers, he says, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. Man, that is the story of our lives. That's the story of creation. What the devil means for evil, God is going to use for good. So don't just get to the other side of this crisis only to look back on it and say, well, I got through it. The purpose of pain, the purpose of suffering when there is one in it, it's not just to get to the other side of it. That's a hard word maybe for our culture where, it, you know, the tiniest splinter and I'm taking a Tylenol or going to the doctor because I just, suffering is just seen as such a bad, terrible thing. But suffering is a tool that the Lord uses to shape us. So to the extent that we're able, embrace it and look for how he's going to glorify himself through this. Look for how he's challenging you. I know you had plans for 2020. You had plans for your spring break. You had plans for this school year. What does Proverbs 16, 9 say? The heart of man will plan his way, but the Lord directs his steps. God had different plans. And that's not a bad thing. Many of you are discovering how uh, your, how this crisis is challenging some of the idols you had set up that you didn't even know you had. Our family is being challenged by how much of our time, energy, money, and, 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 and stress and all that was self-centered, focused back in on ourselves as a family. And now that everything's changed, right, we can look outward and we can see how much time we actually have to invest in other people, to do things for other people. That's just one small example. This is an adventure. Faith is an adventure. And this is an exciting place to be in. Because God doesn't have you here by accident. So go to him and, and, and work with him and ask him to show you what he's doing in your life and what he's doing to glorify himself through all of this. And I'll be praying for you. And you'll do a great job. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.